Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the biggest haul I've ever done. I'm looking at all my books on the floor and it's just like crazy. I recently went to ALA, which is the American Library Association Midwinter Conference in Philadelphia. I went there with Madison from Princess of Paperback, Steph from Shut Up and Read, and Carly from Carly Reads. And we had an amazing time. I will probably be posting a vlog of that experience sometime in the coming weeks. We got a lot of books. I actually got the least amount of books of everyone. So I'll leave their hauls in the description below once they're up. I don't know like if they might be going up after mine. I think Carly's is already up. So you can see the different books that they got. So basically the American Library Association puts on this conference and it's for librarians and business professionals, but you can also go as a blogger. Um, and it's not really attended by booktubers. There are a few that go, but it's not something like BookCon where there's a lot of consumers. It's more so just professionals. In the differences, I haven't been to BEA, but what, from what I heard from everyone, um, but especially there's a big difference between BookCon and ALA, wherein BookCon is really like a convention. It's for the fan experience. There's a lot of authors there to sign books, stuff like that. This is more so for publishers to pitch books to people so that they get them in libraries and in stores and whatnot. So there's a lot of arcs that get given out and they have a big supply. At BookCon, it's more so like drops that you have to wait in line for. And I tend to not go for the arcs during BookCon just because it, I just don't want to wait in line. Like I'd rather be there for the author signings, hanging out with friends, like doing panels, stuff like that. Um, so it's just a little bit of a different type of experience, but I do feel like I got my money's worth and got a lot, a lot of advanced reading copies. And I'm gonna be going through all the ones that I got today. I even got some finished copies of books, so that's great. Yeah, it was just an overall really positive experience. Had a lot of fun with it. And I have so many books to go through. I usually, for the books that I talk about, give pretty in-depth summaries but this is going to be literally just a tagline because otherwise this video will be 14 hours long and no one has the time for that no one wants to hear me speak for that long so we're just gonna kind of go through them otherwise this will take forever and I really feel like it taking forever I will also say that there's like a lot less freebies I guess at ALA like it's more so just about the books and they do have tote bags everywhere because you do need to be able to carry things but the BookCon has more like hats and like people are giving out like this and that like little merch This is more so just about the books not really too many freebies besides tote bags because essential So first I have this pile of graphic novels. I'm just gonna go through them real quick. I didn't even look up what most of them were about just because I didn't <laughs> um, Okay, so what I got here is I got volume one of my hero academia because viz media was there they're a popular manga publisher and um yeah this is a super popular series my friend soleil loves it so i picked up the first volume next i have wonder woman tempest tossed which is an advanced reader's copy of a wonder woman comic um because dc comics was there and this is by Lori halsey anderson and illustrated by layla del Duca. So here is an upcoming Wonder Woman comic. I believe this is for young readers as yes, it's a young adult graphic novel. Some some of these books I think got wet in one of my boxes that I had mailed. So that's like kind of okay. So this one is a kids graphic novel. This one is anti-hero, a graphic novel, and it's about two kids. One's a hero and one's a villain. This one comes out on April 14th. So I, we were at a Boone's Comics booth and I got Faithless, which is by Brian Azzarello and Marie Lovett. And um, it's an erotic comic, graphic novel. Um, that's all I really know about it. It was in the adults section and like it's supposed to be steamy. So I was like, I've never seen that before. So I think it's like magic. I don't know. It looked cool. So I'm gonna try it out. I mean, just like look at the cover. There's like blood, gore. I don't know. This one I was super excited for. So Bloom Comics was there and they had finished copies of Fence Volume 1 by C.S. Picot, Joanna the Mad, and Joanna Lufonte. This is an LGBTQ plus comic about fencers and I believe there's a male male romance so i've just heard that's really cute and really good so when i saw that they were giving away finished copies i ran over to the booth immediately this next one is a harley quinn harleen comic um by 
Dejapan Shajik. Uh, this one's obviously adult. I don't really read comics like this, like superhero comics like this, but I do have an uncle that collects comics and loves them, so I figured he would love to have an advanced reader's copy of a pretty, you know, top of the line comic in his collection so i'm going to be sending this his way and then next there was this sampler I, i'm not sure this actually might be the whole graphic novel but like in the advanced copy is just like in this um leaflet format and this is a thief among the trees which is an ember in the ashes graphic novel so i think this follows Elias, Helene, and their friend Tavi um, in their time in the military academy. So I'm glad that I got my hands on this because I do love an Ember in the Ashes. And I love when series take on like prequel comics or something, you know, different. And then I also have The Magicians here, which is Arcana number one. And I believe this is a graphic novelization of um, The Magicians by Levy Grossman. And they also have Sturges, Buck, and Casada on here. Some other comics that I have is Gotham High by Melissa De La Cruz, illustrated by Thomas Petilli. And this is again for young adults. I have a comic that is adapted from Lee Bardugo's Wonder Woman Warbringer, and this is adapted by Louise Simonson and illustrated by Kit Seaton, and this is for young readers. This Primer Superhero, a graphic novel, which is by Jennifer Murrow, Thomas Krajewski, and art by Greta Lusky, which seems really cool and colorful, and this one's for kids. And I have You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez and illustrated by Julie Marrow. And this is an LGBTQ plus young adult comic. <laughs> now we get into the fun stuff. So let's just go. So I have two finished copies that I got because at the end they do the booth giveaways where they will give away display copies. So from Penguin, I was able to get a finished copy of The Beautiful by Renee Adier, which I read as an arc and I enjoyed. So this takes place in 1800s New Orleans and is kind of a murder mystery with vampires as a backdrop, but follows a girl that left France in New Orleans to escape a dark past. Next, I have Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Raculia, and this is an adult murder mystery where a dying billionaire sends a girl and a cast of misfits on a citywide treasure hunt. And um, yeah, it's a cool mystery, and I guess it involves ghosts. Seem cool. The last finished copy is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is Chloe Brown who, after almost dying, decides she's gonna come up with a list to get a life, and it is a romance. Next, we are going to go into books that are actually already out, but I got arcs that they just happen to have there. Out in January was Seven Deadly Sins by Courtney Alameda and Valin Metani. This is about Kira who can see ghosts and demons that haunt the streets of Japan. And when the demon king threatens the world, she must enlist the help of seven powerful death gods. The next book that I have is Diamond City by Francesca Flores. Diamond City is about a girl that must become a cutthroat assassin in a world that's like an industrial wasteland, but with magic. So it's like kind of a blend of different genres. So for the month, I'm not going to go in like actual order. I'm just going to go like keep it in like group by month. I have Effie Morton, Mystery Queen, The Body Under the Piano. And this is a middle grade novel about a young Agatha Christie and her friend Hector Perot. So it's kind of based on Agatha Christie's life. This is by Martha Jocelyn with illustrations by Isabel Falleff. Um, and I actually got it signed because the author was there. Super cute. Next up is Rebel Wing by Andrea Tang, which is about a black market media smuggler at a prep school, but also involves sentient cyborg dragons. Uh, this is one that I was really looking forward to and I'm glad that I got to grab a copy, which is The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dawn. And this is basically The Bachelorette, but royal and in space. Next is Ink in the Blood by Kim Smijek. And this is a dark YA fantasy that weaves together tattoo, magic, faith, and eccentric theater in a world where lies are currency and ink is a weapon. And last we have The Unwilling by Kelly Braffitt. And this is about Judith who is a foundling with a special ability and so she is raised in the castle. But when her companion, the prince, prepares to ascend the throne, she realizes she has no real position of her own. So March and April are definitely the months that I have the most for, so now I'm going to go into the books being released in March. First up is The Honey Don't List, which is the next book by Christina Lauren, and this is two assistants to America's IT couple in interior design must go on tour with the couple and keep them from imploding. <laughs> next is The Deep by Alma Katsu, and 
I this is a historical fiction novel that I picked up actually because my best friend Melissa loves the Titanic so I saw a book about the Titanic and I was like oh, I'm just gonna send it to her um so Melissa you're getting this book by the way okay so this is about two people survive the Titanic and then years later in World War One find themselves on the sister ship to the Titanic the Britannic so uh yeah some good old historical fiction involving the Titanic. Next is Harley in the Sky by Akemi Don Bowman. Harley's parents lead a circus in Las Vegas, but when they don't let her perform, she runs away with a rival circus. Next is The Vanishing Deep by Asher Scholte, which is a book that I was so, so excited to get because I am really hooked by the premise. <laughs> and basically the tagline of this that I really think is cool, it goes, the dead can be revived for a price. And if you see the finished cover of this, it is gorgeous. Next is The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett. And this is about a duke's daughter that is the only one to survive a curse. And it's part Sleeping Beauty, part Anastasia, but it's totally queer. <laughs> this book is huge and it's Between Burning Worlds by Jessica Brody and Joanne Rendell. And this is the sequel to The Sky Divine, which is part of the System Divine or the the star, uh, I can't remember the first book's title anyways, but it's a retelling of Les Miserables, which is probably why it's so thick, uh, in space. Here we have The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. Also, I was really excited to get this one. This is about Mozart's sister, but it's a twist with a parallel world, and it is technically like historical fantasy. So, um, yeah, Marie Lu always creates really interesting worlds, so I'm excited to see what this is about because the premise is just so unique. So this one is really cool. This is Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. And this is a retelling of Anna Karenina um, by Tolstoy. Oh, and it's in development as a TV series by HBO, which is pretty cool. And it follows a Korean American main character. Next is If I Never Met You by Mahari McFarlane. <clears throat> and I don't know what happened to this book, but it must have gotten rained on in the box. And this is a, about a faux office romance to make an ex jealous and impress a boss. Next is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, who is the author of Station Eleven. It's an exhilarating tale of colliding worlds, and it involves beauty, money, white collar crime, ghosts, and a Ponzi scheme. I don't know, these kinds of novels sometimes tend to give really big descriptions. That's really about all I know. Next is Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGuinness and I read Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness and absolutely fell in love with her writing. She handles really harrowing topics very well. This is about a girl who lives in the Smoky Mountains and when she goes out for a party in the mountains with her friends, she gets lost in the woods and has to survive while also fighting infection in her legs. So it seems like a tale of survival and I know it's just gonna be really powerful because this author writes a lot of powerful books. Next, we have Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. It takes place in Ireland and is a mix between between modern witchcraft and ancient Celtic mythology and involves witches and gods. Next we have a thriller which is The Return by Rachel Harrison and it is about a group of friends that reunites after one of them has been missing for two years and suddenly reappears. And last for March we have The Herd by Andrea Bartz and this is about um, a woman that goes missing and she is the founder of a glamorous co-working space for women. Now we have April which also has a lot of books so first of all we have We Are Blood and Thunder by Kesa Lupo and this is a YA fantasy novel and involves storm magic and two women set on a path for collision. Next is What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor which is a YA rom-com and it, the tagline is can a love triangle have only two people in it. Next up in April is Don't Call the Wolf by Alexandra Ross and this is an Eastern European inspired dark fantasy about a young queen of the forest that must do what she can to protect her forest kingdom from the golden dragon. This one I was so excited to get my hands on and this is Ruthless Gods which is the sequel to Wicked Saints. Wicked Saints follows three different protagonists, one who hears the voices of the gods in her head, one that is a prince that is trying to escape death, and one that is kind of a monster. And yeah, the first book ended on such a big twist. Really excited to get to this one. It's very gorgeous. Next up is Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth, which is her first adult fantasy science fiction novel. This one is about five 20 something superheroes that were famous for saving the world when they were teens and now as adults must face even greater demons. Next up, I picked up the book of Lost Friends by Lisa Wingate and I actually 
Um, you'll notice that I'm going to be saying most of these historical fiction novels that don't actually catch my interest, I decided to pick them up from my grandma because my grandma loves historical fictions. She actually sent me a book, um, this other book by Lisa Wingate, Before We Were Yours, because she loved it that much. So I actually got this book signed to Pat. Uh, yeah, so this one is for my grandma and most of these I'm just going to be sending along to her because I think she'll really enjoy getting them. So this is about three young women that go in search of their lost families in the post-Civil War South and then in modern day a school teacher that rediscovers their story. Here we have Incendiary by Zaradia Cordova. This is about Renata who has the power to steal memories from her enemies and she was used by the king for his own gain and now she has escaped. Here we have Elysium Girls by Kate Pentecost which is actually a Dust Bowl inspired fantasy so I have not ever heard of a Dust Bowl inspired fantasy and it's about a girl gang of witches and some scrap metal horses. Here we have Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst. This is a standalone fantasy about a pair of strong and determined women that will do anything to win these monster races. Here we have another historical fiction I picked up for my grandma and this is The Engineer's Wife and it's based on the true story of the woman who built the Brooklyn Bridge. My grandma is from Brooklyn so I know that she's going to actually really really enjoy this one. Here we have The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix and I picked this one up for my friend Keely because she's from the south and she loves vampires so I knew that she would really like it. It's set in the suburban south in the 90s and about a woman's book club that must protect the neighborhood from a mysterious handsome new neighbor. Here we have The Best Lane Plans by Cameron Lund. This is a new YA rom-com and it's about Keely, <laughs> who is determined to lose her virginity and so she asks her longtime best friend to do the deed with her. Here we have The Secrets of Love Story Bridge by Phaedra Patrick and this is about a single father that unexpectedly gets a second chance at love after saving a woman who has fallen off of a bridge. <laughs> the last book for April is The Astonishing Life of August March, which is about an oddball orphan that is thrown into the wild of post-war New York City after a childhood spent in the theater. Okay, that was by far the biggest pile, so. Yeah, <laughs> we're going strong. Here we have A Girl Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. It says here it's on sale in February, but I read somewhere that it's on sale in May. I don't know. These are all the May releases, by the way. <clears throat> so this is about a murder that happens in a small town, and the case is closed, and then a girl decides to investigate it as her senior thesis and learns that the facts of the case may not be what everyone's assumed that they were. Here we have Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. I had thought that this already came out, but perhaps this is a um, a new publisher or like maybe it came out in the UK, it didn't come out in the US, but this is being published by an imprint of Scholastic. And this is about two boys that meet and fall in love and it's supposed to be really cute and heartwarming. Here we have The Betrothed by Kiara Cass, which I'm really excited for. And this is about a would-be queen who gets betrothed to the king which seems like a perfect match until she finds a stranger who seems to see right into her heart so is the future that she wanted actually what she wants now we have my summer of love and misfortune by lindsey wong this is about a chinese american teen that is thrown into the decadent world of a beijing prep school when she goes to spend the summer in china here we have the fascinators by andrew eliopoulos and this is basically described as the Raven Boys meets Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. This book seems really cool. It's called Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Pachardost. And it is an original fairy tale about a girl that is cursed to be poisonous to the touch and learns what power may actually lie within her curse. Here we have The Jewel Thief by Jenny Mobley, which is another one that I'm really excited for. I really love this cover. It is a lush, slow burn romance set in 17th century France, centered around the Hope Diamond. Here we have Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Van White. The concept of this novel is that Bryson Keller has a dare where he must date someone new every week. The first person to ask him out is who he will date for that week. And so finally a boy asks him out and he says yes. Here we have The Book of V by Anna Solomon, which is again another historical fiction. Um, we said in my grandma. This one is about three different women in three different time periods. So we have a single mother in Brooklyn, modern day 2016, Vivian, a senator's wife in the 1970s, and Esther, who is the fiercely independent young woman in ancient Persia, and I think it's about the biblical Queen Esther. 
So yeah, one of those like tie people together through time. Here we have a ceiling made of eggshells by Gail Carson Levine. And I picked this one up because I know Gail Carson Levine from childhood books like Ella Enchanted. That was one of my favorite books as a kid. And this is a story about a young girl that is set during the expulsion of the Jewish from the Spain in the 1500s and what one girl will do to save her family. Okay, and finally we have By the Book by Amanda Sellett. And it's about Mary who is a literary nerd who compiles a scoundrel survival guide but then ends up falling for the bad boy. Moving on, we have our June releases. So the first one that I was so excited to get is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angeles. This one is described as Moulin Rouge meets the Phantom of the Opera. Um, step right up to a spectacularly haunting debut novel infused with magic, mayhem, power, and passion. Yeah, I've just seen a lot of really good things about this book and I was instantly captured by the summary, so I'm really, really happy I got my hands on this. Here we have Sisters of Sword and Song by Rebecca Ross, who wrote The Queen's Resistance or Queen's Rising. It's a new standalone fantasy about two sisters. Basically one sister has abandoned the military in their kingdom and so the other sister will stand in for her to go to prison. This is The Circus Rose by Betsy Cornwell and it is a queer retelling of Snow White and the Red Rose set amongst a circus backdrop. Next we have Grey Thorn by Crystal Smith. This is a Bloodleaf novel. They did redesign the covers of the series. I really like these new covers. They're really pretty. And Bloodleaf is actually a retelling of the fairy tale Goose Girl. So this is the sequel. Here we have a song of, of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. It's a West African inspired fantasy in which a grieving crown princess and a desperate refugee find themselves on a collision course to murder each other despite their growing attraction. Next is The Kinder Poison by Natalie May. This follows a teenage girl that is meant to be the human sacrifice in a deadly game between heirs that will do anything to get the throne. Here we have Hood by Jenny Elder Moke and this is a retelling that follows the daughter of Robin Hood and she sets out basically to find her father to escape the wolf. Here we have The Paris Library by Janet Skelskeen Charles. Again, this is one I'll probably be sending to my grandma. She like loves World War and stuff, historical fiction. This is based on the true story of the heroic librarians at the American Library in Paris during World War. Here we have The Black Swan of Paris, which I'm actually was kind of into the summary, so I might be keeping myself this one to myself first before I send it to my grandma. But it's basically about a celebrated young singer in Paris that uses her popularity uh, with the Nazis to give information to the Parisian resistance. That's it for June. Now we're moving on to July releases. Here we have Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. This is about Shady Grove who has inherited her father's ability to pull ghosts from the grave with a fiddle. Next up is A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood and it's a coming of age romance set in this like Gatsby-like mansion. Here we have They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman and this is a murder mystery set in a rich prep school on Long Island. Here is The Woman Before Wallace, a novel of Windsor's Vanderbilt and Royal Scandal by Bryn Turnbull. If you can't guess it, it's a historical fiction I'll send to my grandma. Um, this is about Prince Edward who has an affair with an American divorcee and it's a fictionalization of a true story. And last for the month of July, we have Girl From Nowhere by T Tiffany Rosenhan. And this is Red Sparrow meets One of Us is Lying. So this is a girl, Sophia, who moves to Montana, but her family are diplomats. So she is a trained spy and she thinks she's gonna get a life to live a normal high school experience. However, murder follows her to Montana. If you can believe it, I only have two books left to haul. Oh my God, I feel like I've been talking at the speed of light, trying to get, get through all these books, but there there's just a lot here. <laughs> okay. So for one book I have for August, it's Love Sold Separately by Ellen Meester. And this is a, about a failed actress who lands a job as a host for the shopping channel, but things turn wild when the guy that hired her is found dead. And for September, I have Even If We Break by Mareike Nijkamp. 
basically this is kind of what the cover says five friends go to a cabin four of them are hiding secrets three years of history behind them two are doomed from the start one person wants to end this no one is safe are you ready to play and if you can believe it those are all of the books that i got at the american library association midwinter conference i really had a fantastic time i hope that you all enjoyed seeing the arcs that i got and the books that are coming out in the coming months i know it was a really cool experience for me comment down below what books most caught your eye during this haul and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one